In this video, we'll go over what air mass or AM is and how it's related to the detailed balance limit of a solar cell. These two concepts are critical for understanding how solar cells are tested and what their theoretical efficiency limit is. But first of all, what is air mass, also known as AM? If we see a solar cell on the ground shown here, and above is a section of the Earth's atmosphere, as well as the sun right above, we can measure two distances. The first, denoted y, is the direct overhead or perpendicular distance from the sun to the earth. The second distance, denoted h, is the length from the sun to the point of observation, in this case, the photovoltaic cell. There is an angle theta between h and y, and from this, we can form a right triangle shape where cosine of theta is equal to y over h. AM, air mass, is defined as 1 over cosine theta, so this would then equal to h over y. And so air mass can also be defined as the proportion of the atmosphere that light needs to travel in order to reach the Earth's ground relative to the overhead path length from the sun to the Earth. At different AM, or air mass, different solar spectra are measured due to light needing to travel different distances and attenuating as it goes through the atmosphere before reaching the observer, in this case, the photovoltaic cell. To look at this at a different angle, we can also look at this diagram, where we see the different AM or air masses uh, at different levels. And so AM0 in the center means that AM is equal to zero. And so if we look at the AM equation, this means that theta needs to be 90 degrees. This means that we are measuring light incident at the entry point of the atmosphere as shown in the middle arrow. Moreover, AM1 means that AM is equal to one, and so this means that theta is equal to zero, and so the sun is directly overhead of the observer. Finally, AM1.5 has theta equal to 48.2 degrees, and so this AM1.5 is the standard AM used to test solar cells because the sun is not always at AM1 directly overhead from the observer or the photovoltaic cell. So AM1.5 provides a better estimate of the sun's irradiance on Earth accessible to the human population, which is mostly located in the temperate or mid-latitude regions of the Earth. And so as a result, AM1.5 is useful for representing the average solar irradiance of the whole year for mid-latitudes. If we go to AM2 or AM3, which are la higher latitudes, these AMs are at larger angles, allowing for more light to attenuate before reaching the Earth's surface. And so it would also have a different kind of solar spectrum measured at those higher air masses. And so let's take a look at the AM 1.5 and AM 0 spectra in this diagram shown here, where we can see that the spectral irradiance is on the y-axis showing the energy of light incident onto a square meter on the Earth for each wavelength of light in nanometers. And then on the x-axis, you can see the wavelength um, in units of nanometers. Here we see there are three spectra graphed, where in black is the AM0 spectra, and then in blue is the AM1.5G, or global, and AM1.5D, direct, is in red. Global includes all solar spectra at AM1.5, meaning that it includes the scattered and direct light, and so that is the blue spectra. Whereas for the AM1.5D, this spectra doesn't account for scattered light, and so it only measures the direct sunlight, and therefore that is why the red curve has less spectral irradiance measured compared to that of the AM1.5G spectra. The AM1.5G spectra is used for most PV standardized testing, PV as photovoltaic, because most solar cells make use of both scattered and direct sunlight. If we integrate the entire AM1.5G spectra, the total intensity is about 1000 watts per meter squared. The AM1.5D spectra in red is used for testing systems with a light concentrator that does not absorb scattered light. And so with this spectra, it's important to understand how this relates to 
understanding the solar cell efficiency. And so since a solar cell absorbs available sunlight into into the in the cell and then converts it into electricity, the amount of sunlight available will put an upper limit to the solar cell efficiency. And so to determine the theoretical limit to a single junction solar cell's efficiency, also known as the detailed balance limit, we can derive this limit with two methods. The first is using the AM1.5G spectra, since this is the measured solar spectra that uh, we test with solar cells and want to know the theoretical limit uh, of efficiency with this spectra, since this is the available sunlight at mid-latitudes. Another method is to use the Shockley-Kaiser published method, which assumes that the sun and earth are black bodies, and then from there derives a theoretical efficiency limit, also known as the detailed balance limit. And so in the next videos, we'll be going over and deriving the detailed balance limit with these two methods. Thank you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for next videos, uh, please share in the comments below. Thank you.